promise beyond this cars living positively and of course my guests are already with me in studio but before i talk to them a 2018 report did say that about one million four hundred thousand or if you like a million five hundred thousand uh kenyans live with hiv but the good news is that the new infections rate has decreased from uh uh, in 2014, we had about 100,000 new infections, but as at 2018, we did have about 52,000 uh, new infections, meaning the rate of the new infections has decreased. And with me in studio is uh, Mr. Kimutai Kemboi, Kimu sorry about that, and Doreen Mora Moracha. They will be sharing with us their story, their HIV story, and more so living positively, how we can all live uh, positively. Straight on to you, Kimutai. Share your story with us. Okay, um, um, it happened that um, uh, I was in high school, and um, having been born in a um, in a humble background, uh, issue to do with fees was a was a big issue to me. Mm -hmm. So when I was approaching to clear my high school, I had an issue with fee, and I had to drop out of school. Then after dropping out of, of school, I had that intention that I must complete uh, uh, school. But now, after dr dropping out of school, I had to look for my own ways on where I, I will get the funds to go back to school. So I decided that um, let me look for some ways I can get the funds. So I decided that maybe I'd, I'd do some hustles over in, here and there and try to sell. So I came to Nairobi and um, uh, I was employed by this lady. Uh, she was a single mother. I worked for her as a garden's boy. Then now uh, I worked for her for a while and uh, as I worked for her we got to interact a lot. Then it got to um, an extent that she asked me about my life and I was, I was free because I desperately needed help. So I opened up to her, I told her about my story about I, how I ended up not completing school and she offered that um, she was willing to assist me but in, in a condition and now she never um, she, she, she never um, gave me a hint of, of what the, the condition was all about so she asked me to um, go and, um, um, and um, go over it and then she will ask me later so I took my time after a week, uh, yeah, close to a week, she came and asked me if I was ready. So I was um, desperately in need of, of help. Uh, so I just said, yes, yes, I'm ready. So I never knew what she wanted from me. So she asked me that she wanted to sleep with me. I don't know how it happened. Uh, it's like just I got confused out of that um, desperation. I ended up sleeping with her, and that is where my life really changed. And that is where your life really changed? Yeah. Uh, how did you no 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 how did you find out uh that she had infected you okay i came to learn about it um about two years later and then you know after i learned about my status i i i, I tried to trace back where i i, I, I might have um, um he got the infection then now i'm trying to trace back it was her and then and then now um when i realized that she could be the one. I tried, um, um, uh, um, you know, asking about where she is, how she is, and um, I learned that um, she was deceased by then, and um, uh, trying to, to go into what what um, um, what resulted um, is that she got um, uh, really sick, and um, she refused to, to be treated. Mm -hmm. And then now, that's why um, I learned that she's the one who infected me. Okay. Yeah. I'll be coming back to you, Kimutai, especially on uh, your reaction after, you know, the test uh, came out positive. Mm -hmm. Doreen, mm -hmm. your t-shirt reads, I am a beautiful story. And it's indeed, you are a beautiful story. <laughs> yeah. Share your story with us. Um, so my name is Doreen. I'm 26 years old. I was born with HIV, so I have been HIV positive my whole life. I am a third born in a family of five, but then uh, my other siblings are negative. Uh, one of them passed on, and then now I'm the only positive sibling. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents are a discordant couple. Uh, my mom is HIV positive, mm -hmm. and my dad is HIV negative. Okay. So for 20, almost 27 years now, because in August I turned 27, mm -hmm. it's been a journey. Uh, the first time I 
was told I was HIV positive, I was 13. Uh, by that time, my mom had been really sick. So she went into a coma. And then when she woke up, she took me to hospital. And uh, the doctor told me, Doreen, you're HIV positive. Uh, you got it from your mom. And you will have to take uh, ARVs for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. At that point, it didn't really make sense to me because I'm 13. And my whole life, actually, I had spent it in hospitals. So it's, I had gotten used to it. And uh, though my parents had found out earlier on about my HIV status, mm -hmm. but they, they were in denial. And uh, they, they, were, they were prepared that I was going to die because when they found out I was eight years old and my doctors told them until she reaches 12, then we can't really give her a clean bill of health. Mm -hmm. So you just take care of her. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know those times HIV was considered a death sentence. Yes. So the first thing, and because my little brother had died due to age-related complications, my mom was very sure she was going to lose me. So she had me baptized at the age of eight. Mm. And she was like, in case she dies, then she goes to be with the Lord. And then years on, you know, I was sick here and there, but I never, it never hit me that it was HIV. So even, even in school, we used to be taught who oh, people were living with HIV, they die, they're promiscuous. So in my mind, there was no way I could be HIV positive. So now when I get tested and uh, the doctor tells me, Doreen, you're HIV positive and you're going to start taking new drugs because before that I was taking septrins. Mm -hmm. So now the, I started ARVs officially in 2005. And after that now, to me, the moment I was disclosed to, I, it was easy because I was assured, I, my mom used to treat me when we would go to hospital. So I knew I had a tour every month <laughs> and I knew I had to eat chips and chicken every <laughs> month. So to me it was a nice thing at that time. At that time. Now the following year I was supposed to go to high school and uh, you know living with ARVs comes with a lot of nutrition uh, changes and uh, so sorry taking ARVs requires nice nutrition you have to be in a condition where it's stress-free and now I'm going to Form 1 and I'm supposed to be going to boarding school. And I was really excited that I am going to boarding school. Mm -hmm. And then my mom tells me, you can't go to boarding school. So I looked at those letters that I had been called uh, to these respective schools and I was like, why doesn't she want me to go to boarding school? You know, there's that independence of going to boarding school. Mm -hmm. And then she told me, if you go to boarding school, you won't get people to take care of you. Mm -hmm. You won't get nice food and uh, you have to be home so that I can take care of you. Mm -hmm. So that year, the, in Form 1, I went to a day school. In Form 2, I also went to a day school. Now, in 2007, during the post-election violence, because our home is at the border town, mm -hmm. so we had to move because of the, sorry, of the clashes. So after we moved, uh, my mom was, we had to, I had to transfer schools. And uh, the schools in Tala, were kind of, there were no day schools available. So my mom was like, now you have to go to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. But then that boarding school was across the road from where we lived. Mm -hmm. So that, in case of anything, she just pops in, exactly. sees me, and then she knows that I'm okay. She's yeah. assured that I'm okay. Now, there was just one challenge in going to boarding school because when I got tested, the doctor told me specifically, don't tell anybody you're HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And then, in the school, there was a rule. You had to tell your matron. If you had a health condition, you had to tell the matron, mm -hmm. and then the matron had to keep your medication for you mm -hmm. so that the, you, they can give it to you the time you're supposed to take it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, how am I supposed to tell my matron I am HIV positive? Yes. The, the doctor has already told me, don't tell anyone. So now I was, I was caught in between. So now we had to devise a way for my parents to sneak in the medication for me in school. And they told me, if anybody asks you what is wrong with you, just tell them you have a heart condition. So that is how I lived through high school. And it worked. And it worked. And 27 years on, you're still going strong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll be coming back to you, Doreen. Okay. Uh, Kimutai. Yes. 
so you take the test, the first test. Yes, I. And it turns out positive. It turns out, it turned out to be um, uh, what I never expected. Mm -hmm. So um, I just walked um, from that place. I never wanted to speak to anyone about it, even the the, um, the people were there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went home and I tried to convince myself maybe that test was not um, um, was not working well. Mm -hmm. So I'll go and try somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I went and tried about five other times, and the results were still the same, same still thing. The same. And everything you'll hear there is, you live well, and you have to be on medication. Then I'm like, now how on medication? And I've been hearing stories that you know, if you're on on ARV, um, there's some uh, uh, there's some reactions that you always experience, like you'll have some side effects. Then I was like, how now am I going to live with these side effects? So I decided that um, I'll only wait until when I'm that sick, then I'll go and start medication. So I went um, uh, on. A, a denial for close to one year. Mm -hmm. Then now from there, I had not really accepted myself, but I approached um, um, someone from from the social media. I um, I, t -t -t I opened up about my status, mm -hmm. and I asked him I wanted to start medication, but I don't know I, I, I don't know anything about it, and I don't know how to go about it. I don't know where I'll go and start my medication. Mm -hmm. So he offered to assist me, and really he really held my hand, mm -hmm. he introduced me to. Um, it to medication, he explained to me everything how the how living with HIV is. And then now from there now after I was introduced to medication, mm -hmm. that's now when I um I, I accepted myself. Mm -hmm. And that is where I'm, in my life went through transformation from being on denial to now to accepting myself mm -hmm. yeah before we even talk more on uh, you accepting yourself and the situation that you're in, mm -hmm. there's something you vowed to do. To ladies, mm -hmm. as uh, in that stage when you were you were still in the denial stage, what was it? Okay, um, I think I'm, I was really uh, I ruled, I lose that um, um, you know um, uh, that is of being being associated with ladies. Mm -hmm. I really lost them. Uh, um, whenever I saw ladies, I saw them like they are my enemies. Mm -hmm. Any lady that I came across, I saw them just like enemies. So I never wanted to associate with them or mm -hmm. maybe be close to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really okay. hurted me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Doreen, mm -hmm. uh, you are in high school, boarding school, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I want us to go a little bit back to growing up, mm -hmm. and especially because you said that among your siblings, you're the only one who was positive. Yeah. How was it relating with them, it especially was, when you were young? It was hard. Because, uh, you know, my parents gave me all the attention. In their minds, they knew we are going to lose this child, so we better be close to her. But then in my siblings' eyes, they were like, she's the one who is loved more. So it, it always, it's always brought that conflict that, why do they give her so much attention? Yet to my parents, they're like, no, you're just trying to save this little time we have with her. And then to my siblings, they're like, mm-mm. It's, it's, not, it's not supposed to be like that, you see, especially my older siblings, because my younger brother has always been, he's always been there. Actually, there are times even he was the one who used to remind me, you've not taken your medication, but I, I, by that time I really didn't know whether he understood that he was HIV positive or not, but right now he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you were, you were actually 13, mm -hmm. when you found out that you were positive, mm -hmm. if I could take you back a little yeah. bit, did you understand what that means? Did you actually know what HIV and AIDS means? At that age, we are taught in school, mm -hmm. and you know, there's that perception, as you did say, that mm -hmm. then HIV was like a death sentence. Yeah. Did you really know what this means? Uh, I knew I had a health condition, but I didn't know it was that serious. And as much as in school he had been taught about uh, People who were living with HIV were dying, and uh, it was you were not supposed to get it. And the, the, the teachers used to actually insist that people who are living with HIV are promiscuous. So there is no way, as a young person, you're supposed to get it. So it used to make, I, at that time when I was disclosed to, I really didn't take it very seriously. By the way, when the doctor just said you're HIV positive, the first thing I was excited about was taking new medication mm -hmm. because I was already, the septrins were really, they had begun to, you know, taking Take them over time. So I was like, ah, I really need a change. So the change in the 
medication did uh, excite me a little. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the fact that now I, I had to be taking more serious medication because now the doctor told me you can't miss. If you miss, your viral load goes up and then you'll become sick. So for me that time, I really didn't take it in, in a serious manner. And I didn't even uh, see at the stigma or the discrimination that comes with it. It didn't hit my mind at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents used to do a lot to protect me from being stigmatized. Sure. So immediately they sensed that there is some form of stigma, they would really swing into action. To, the, to my mom, if she was the one who is being stigmatized, she would be okay. But to me, mm, she wouldn't allow it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now in school, mm -hmm. And uh, you're now alone, I would say, although your parents are just across the road. <laughs> yeah. And your doctor did tell you not to disclose that you're under any medication to mm -hmm. anyone. But was there a point where maybe a, a, stu a fellow student, you know, found out you're under medication or uh, found out that you're actually positive or any of your teachers? Uh, um, uh, a fellow student did find out I was taking medication, mm -hmm. but they didn't know what the medication was for. And uh, when she asked, I told her it's for a heart condition. So once one of them told me, so how do you feel? What are your symptoms? What, the, what, does, what happens when uh, your heart is weak or something? Mm -hmm. So I was there telling them, you know, I get dizzy and then I lack strength. But now I, am just, I was just guessing the symptoms because I didn't even know what that was about. <laughs> so I, I just came up with excuses. But then she was satisfied actually that I have a heart condition. Mm -hmm. So they, they, never, they never really knew that it was HIV positive because I, I couldn't tell them. And then, you know, high school has its own stigma. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't like to be stigmatized in school. It mm -hmm. would have been taken at all on me. Sure. So once I told them that I, was, uh, I had a heart condition, they were okay. And if my teachers never knew that I was HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So it was, just, it was a whole secret until I finished Form 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we tie back to you? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's now, how many years? It's six years since you found out that you're positive because it was in, you found out in 2015, right? Yeah. So it's how many years? Three? Four? Four, four. years. Uh, four yeah. years, 2019. Four years, okay. So you did later fi found, out, find out, found out that uh, you, the lady did mm -hmm. infect you intentionally. How did you find out and uh, how did that make you feel? Okay. Um, uh, you know, after I realized that it, she was the one, I wanted to know how she's living. Then now as I try to to do a follow-up i learned that she was deceased and you know now i was like then like um what killed her so i tried to inquire and as uh, um someone he told me that um she was sick and then uh, she refused to be treated she said she has she had a condition that cannot be that um, um, um uh, might not be healed so then i realized that it must be um, it must be HIV. Have you forgiven her? I forgive her, and whenever I remember her, I just say, "May her soul rest in peace." I forgive and forgot. Mm -hmm. Even if she was alive, I would shake her hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you also did mention that you, of course, went through counselling, mm -hmm. and that it really did help. Mm -hmm. But now, at what point did you decide to open up? Mm -hmm. Let's not go to social media first because mm -hmm. you're very vocal about it on, say, Facebook. Yes. But when did you open up to family, to friends, and what was their reaction? Okay, now after I was introduced to medication, I think now that is where I accepted myself, and I had, um, um, you know, uh, I had that. Um, um, that piece and I felt like I think I should open up so I approached my uh, my elder brother whom we are so close I told him about it he was really shocked but he accepted it and then now I was like I, I, so now how am I go how, how will I approach the the other members of the family so I asked him to go and do it on my behalf he really did they were shocked but they accepted it mm -hmm. And then now it happened about him um, disclosing to my friends and uh, like my schoolmates. It happened that I was um, I was in a hostel. Then now uh, my appearance was really very poor because um, as, as, um, I had an issue when it comes to um, you know accessing my RVs because at times you are with your friends or 
your friends are low, 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 low over there and then you can go and, and get your drugs. So I used to wait for them until they sleep, then I go for my drugs. So my parents was really affected. And then at times, like you, are, you have some stories, then um, uh, this start like discussing about someone or how, how he has grown thin, how he, it's like he has messed someone. Then it really hurted me because I knew after that, after, after him or her, then I'll be next. So it really hurted me and I said, how am I going to avoid this? Then I decided that maybe I should open up. So there was the, um, it got to an extent that they were discussing about a friend, um, actually a neighbor, and um, I had to intervene and ask them, why do you say that um, so and so is, um, is infected? Then they told me, you see, of late he has grown thin, uh, it's, it's like he's not been feeling well. And then I asked, I asked them, have, have you ever heard him disclosing that I'm, I'm living in the HIV? Then they said no. They said, this has, um, um, you need not to prove, but you can just look at someone and, and say that he's living with HIV. Then I told them no. And me, do you believe that I'm living with HIV? They told me no. You look, you are, you are healthy. It's like you don't have HIV. Then I told them, no, I'm living with HIV and I'm healthy. So um, it does not mean that if you, if, you are, if you have HIV, you have to be thin, you have to sure. be sick or more over time. Then they said, no, it's like you're lying to us. Then, then now I went to, um, um, and, and brought my, um, my drugs and placed them on the table and I told them, these are not my drugs. Now do you believe that I'm living with HIV? Everybody just went, mom. Mm -hmm. No one actually asked me anything about it. It's like they were shocked. And from that time, they respected me. Then mm -hmm. I said, I think this is now how I should, um, I should, um, I should be, uh, like, how I should go, uh, you know, go about stigma. Mm -hmm. It's like I should open up so that if people, um, I don't know if it's respect or they fear you. Mm -hmm. Then I said, this, uh, this is now how I should go about it. Mm -hmm. So from there now, I started opening my, up to my, my classmates. And then they were shocked, but um, they really, um, um, you know, stood with me. Mm -hmm. And um, even right now, they are still my friends. So it, um, it never affected me in any way. Then now from there, I moved to social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's actually good that they did stand by you and it did help them, you know, to see the light, if I would say. That doesn't mean because you're thin, then mm. you're positive. Yeah. From there, you now went to social media. Yeah, Why know. did you decide to make it public on social media? What okay. prompted that? Okay, you know now, being, uh, like being in school, um, you get interact with a lot of people. And, uh, and you know now, at this age, there's an advent of what we call sponsors and um being in school at times you see like especially the ladies um like they are brought in by different people they are dropped to school by different people every day so now you feel like it's like um she's heading where um where she's heading is not good and then now you know you can't approach him um, approach her or him and um and you know you tell him that where you're heading is um is not good because it will be, um, it will be like now. Uh, why do you have, why do you have to, it to interfere like with my life? Mm -hmm. So I said maybe if um, if I opened up about um, how I was in a, in a, in a, um, in such a relationship and where I ended up, then it might be in a way. Um, I inspire someone. So I decided that maybe I'm, um, I can open up and. Uh, you know, you will inspire like a, a few people in a way. Mm -hmm. So that's now when I decided to go on the social media because now that's where you get a lot of, uh, of you get, who you know, um, um, and interact with a lot of people, especially the young people. Sure. And I say that this is the platform that I can interact with, both whom, whom, whom I can meet one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and those whom I may not meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at least, um, and, and the access that information, sure, where they sure. get that information. Yeah. Let's talk about your first post, like for instance on Facebook. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction like from the people that or the audience on our social media? Okay, yeah, it was not a direct post like I used to do. Um, it, it just okay. I used 
to write a lot of stories but um it was it was not about me it, i was just going like um around the bushes mm -hmm. then now eventually um, uh, um and eventually i decided that now i think i should open up so uh, it, it was like i was trying to see how how um, um how how the reception would be okay, sure. and then after writing those stories i was seeing that um there was a good reaction and then now from there now i decided to disclose i opened about, about my status okay. and then and the reception was really overwhelming yeah, and then now that inspired me that i think i should do more mm -hmm. mm. okay uh, Doreen, you also decided to go public about your status. Was it in 2015 on, on Facebook, for instance? Yeah. Why? Um, let me take you a little bit back. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, when I when I finished high school, mm -hmm. I was I wanted to I had two career choices. One of them was being a journalist, mm -hmm. a radio presenter, to be specific, and the other one was being an air hostess. So I started with the radio presenter. I went to a relative of mine and sought some career advice and mm -hmm. the, the first thing he told me was that you cannot become a journalist. So I asked him why and he was like uh, you're HIV positive. People will know you and once people know you they will know your status and you, you will be public, you will be out there and they will stigmatize you. So you cannot do that. So he told me just find a course that people will know you and I was okay. I still have the air hostess to fall back to. Mm -hmm. So I went to a certain school and uh, I have a scar on my